Santa Bakashata. Oh, Father, we worship you. We glorify your holy name. We adore you. Oh, Father, we worship you. We glorify your holy name. We adore you. We say thank you, Lord Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to come before you to learn at your feet. Father, Lord, we have been learning from you. We have been receiving instructions. We will be guided by your instructions. And when we live by your instructions, we will be led by the Holy Ghost. For we are your children. Yes, we are your sons. Oh, Father, we just honor you. Our hearts and minds are open to hear from you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We continue from where we stopped the other time. We were talking about um, the specific issues against the church of Titara. And we started with the basics talking about what was the issues whereby God said, Jesus wrote, told John to write a letter to the church of Titara. But he said, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So it is, this letter is not just for one church. It's a letter to the churches. Although it's a letter to the church of Titara, but prophetically, it's a letter to the churches. And it's a letter to our day. Because it's in the New Testament, it's in Revelation. And he said, the specific issues against the church of Titara, which is tolerating the presence of and the teachings of false prophet or prophetess, that is the spirit or the prophetess of Jezebel. And I said that although it named a prophetess, it, it is a spirit of Jezebel. And it is not only a woman that has a spirit of Jezebel. No. In Act 13, there was a sorcerer that tried to stop the preaching of the gospel. It does the spirit of Jezebel. There are those that try to stop or that try to, that try to deceive or connively change the gospel to something else. That is the spirit of Jezebel. And that is what he's saying here. So we picked it up. Then we spoke about the beginning, what it means to have the spirit of Jezebel, which means tolerating evil, idolatry, adultery, or fornication. And we said that the adultery and fornication, although, yes, it's actually fornication and adultery, it also means when you are serving other gods, you are a fornicator. You are an adulterous person. Because an adultery is leaving what you have to another. So when you are serving another god, it's an adultery. And that is what God is talking about. So, we will continue now, like we said, we want to continue in this video to talk about Jezebel. Why did Jesus bring the issue of Jezebel here? He said they were tolerating the presence and teaching of the false prophetess called Jezebel. Why? So with that, we are first of all, let's read where the statement was made in Revelation Chapter 2, from verse 20. And it says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. Who did she might not even be a prophet, but there are those that call themselves, I'm a prophet. But he is saying, Thou calleth herself a prophetess, and she might not be. So it is not because someone has called him or herself what they call themselves means that that is who they are. That is why Jesus said, that, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, that is you tolerated, you approved, you accepted that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. That is, to leave what God has told them to do and to start doing things that is not of God. 21, and I gave her space to repent of her fornications, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. 
and I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. This is what it is. That she deceived, seduced these people of God into committing fornication, into idolatry, into practicing idolatry. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we now said, let us actually look at the story of Jezebel. Jezebel was the daughter of Etbal, king of the Sidonians, who married Ahab, king of Israel. Largely because of her influence in seeking to combine the worship of Yahweh with the worship of Baal. Her aim is to corrupt the worship of God and to bring other gods in. And this can be seen in 1 King chapter 16, 1 King chapter 16, from verse 31 to 33. And it came to pass, as it has been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the sons of Nebat. That is, he's talking about Ahab now. Ahab has always been walking in negation to the will of God. To walk in the sins of his fathers. Jeroboam. Then he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Edbal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. He was deceived. He was picked up. First of all, Ba um, Ahab has already having this. Ahab already had this heart of frivolity. That is why he said he walked in the sins of his father. So he was easily deceived and he started worshipping Ba. And he read up an altar for Ba. So in Israel, he now created an altar for Ba in the house of Ba, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a groove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the king of Israel that were before him. Wow. He was the worst. Jezebel was made to marry King Ahab to seal a profitable trade alliance between Israel and Phoenicia. What she brought along was worship of Ba and Astarte. This ushered in the worst period of the Jewish kingdom in the Old Testament. This was the worst. This was an open celebration of evil, of worshipping of evil, of worshipping of other gods. Worshipping of other gods. Worshipping of Ba. Let's look at the evil acts of Jezebel. One, she sought for the extermination of all the prophets of Israel, all the prophets of God. And this can be seen in 1 Kings 18, 4, 9 to 14, and 2 Kings 9, verse 7. For it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Remember, Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. He killed a lot of them. He killed, she killed a lot. She killed a lot of them. Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. Wickedness. And he said, what have I? Because... Now, Prophet Elijah came to him, that's Obadiah, that I want to talk to the king. And the king has been looking for Elijah to, to kill through Jezebel. Jezebel has been deceiving the king to do, the king of Israel, to kill the prophet of God. So, now, Elijah has now come to Obadiah to tell Obadiah, come, I want to talk to the, I want to talk to the king. And this is what Obadiah said. 
And he said, What have I seen that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord had not sent to seek thee. Ahab was looking for Elijah. And when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here. You are not sending me to Ahab that I have been looking for a way to kill you and kill anybody that is related to you. And now if I go, let's watch what Obadiah said. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee with her, I know not. After you have sent me to him, I will now go that you are here. Then the Spirit of God will take you away, and you will not be here. Then, I will be in trouble. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I have gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee with her, I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my mouth, from my youth. Because if I do this now, I know God is with you, Elijah. This, when I now go to Ahab that you are here, and you are not here, I will be the one to be killed. Was it not told my Lord that I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How now, how I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophet by fifty in a key and fed them with bread and water? And now thou say, go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. This thing happened before now, that Jezebel killed prophets of the Lord, hundreds. That he has to go and hide others in the cave. You are not telling me to go and tell him that you are here. Look at what he says here. We want you to see what Jezebel has done, killing the prophets of God. In 2 Kings 9, verse 7 says, And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants the prophet, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. Here, God has already spoken that Jezebel should be killed. And now, the man that God has sent is now saying that, I want to finish everybody in the house of Ahab. Because... Jezebel is there. He has killed a lot of prophets of God and a lot of prophets of Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. The second one, the evil deeds, the evil acts of Jezebel. If Jezebel was responsible for the killing of Naboth and confiscation of his vineyard for her husband. And this one is seen in 1 Kings 21. And it came to pass, after this thing, that Nabal the Zezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Zezreel, hard by the palace of King, uh, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Nabal, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs. Because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seemed good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Give me yours, and I will give you everything you want. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth did this Zezreelite has spoken to him, for he has said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would not eat bread. Look at greed. This is a king that have lands upon lands. He's looking just for a vineyard. Wickedness, envious, covetousness, and greed. That is the heart of men. And so, although we are blaming Jezebel, this heart of this king is also so corrupt. If you have a corrupt heart, a greedy and envious heart, 
he can easily be turned. That is what happens to him. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is that spirit so sad, that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth, the Zedrelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let her heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of nobody. I will give thee. Are you the owner? Of course, the heart of the king is already spoiled. It's a covetous, envious heart, a greedy heart, who has everything but is not content with what he has. So it can easily be deceived. If you are not content with what you have, you can easily be deceived. And boy, this Satan is ever there waiting to do that. So she wrote letters to Ahab's, in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letter unto the elders and to the nobles where there is in the city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him. Now, bearing false witness, wickedness of the highest, bearing false witness. Be careful of false witness, what you don't know about. These people never knew, but because there is a seal of the king, okay. And now people have been set to bear false witness, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in the city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which he had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belia, and said before him, And the men of Belia witnessed against him even against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and he is dead. Are you seeing this? A woman, a queen in Israel with the heart of the devil who has come with different kind of gods and has derailed the people to evil bearing false witness and killing incessantly and it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead that Jezebel said to Ahab arise take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite which he refused to give thee for money for Naboth is not alive but dead and it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth Israel to take possession of it. He did it. He went and took possession of it. It's not yours, but he did. This is the act of Jezebel. But again, the people, if they are not strong enough, they can easily be deceived. And a covetous, greedy heart can easily be deceived. That is what we have seen here. A covetous, greedy heart can easily be deceived. So be careful. This is the story of Jezebel. Hallelujah. Now, the final demise of Jezebel. This one is in 2 Kings chapter 9, from verse 33 to 37. The final demise of Jezebel. And he said, that is, the person that was sent to finish everything, kill Jezebel, kill Ahab, and finish his descendant. Everybody. And he said, throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the world and on the horses. And he trod her underfoot. And when he was coming, he did eat and drink and said, Go, see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more 
of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. That's Jezebel. Wherefore, they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. God has sent Elijah to prophesy that Jezebel will be scattered. Dogs will eat. They will not find her body to be buried. And the carcasses, or, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field, in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say this is Jezebel, so that they will not be able to see Jezebel to pee, because Jezebel will become a carcass. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the same final demise of eternal condemn, condemnation is being reserved for those who approve and condone the teachings and act of Jezebelism, Jezebelism in the church. Now, when we look at this story, we will say, yes, we are talking of Jezebel, the Old Testament. But no, he's telling us that it's not Jezebel. We are dealing with now the spirit of Jezebel in the church. A false prophet of prophetess. Who call themselves prophets and prophetess. And there is a, condemn, there is a judgment on them. He said, the same final demands of eternal condemnation that was given in Kings to Jezebel and Ahab is also being said here. Final condemnation is being reserved for those who approve and condone the teaching and act of Jezebelism in the church. And we will see this in Revelation 22 and 23. And Revelation chapter 2 from 22 and 23. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. This is the place where God has made clear, even if you are a Christian, if you don't repent of these Jezebel characteristics of wickedness, of greed and covetousness, of idolism, idolatry, fornication, and adultery, if you don't repent, this is where I say, you will not be raptured. You will be cast into the great tribulation. This is where it is. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery which are into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. There is room for repentance. So he's saying, repent of these deeds. Repent of this wickedness. Because if you don't, you can be cast into the great tribulation. Praise the name of the Lord. In, and I will kill her children with death. There are those that are not of God. They will be with her in the church. Remember, we are reading Revelation. There are those in the church that have not, they, have, they only come and go. They don't give themselves to God. They are the children of Jezebel. They are the children of the devil. They are there. He said, I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which stretches the reins and hearts. You see, nobody might know who they are, but God searches the hearts. He searches, he knows that these are not of me. First of all, he has won at the beginning. Those that are of God, that have not agreed to repent, will not be raptured. They will be cast into the great tribulation. They will be cast into the great tribulation. I don't want to go deep into that because it is very deep. But the second one is the children, those that are not of God, that are the children of Jesus, will be slaughtered. And all the church will know that he is the God that checks the heart. He knows how the heart is. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you one of the Jezebelic characteristic children in the church? You call yourself prophet, prophetess, 
but your heart is so evil and you deceive the children of God, your life is settled. Condemnation. And those that listen to those falsehood, false doctrine that is not of God, that is not the gospel, and that are being carried away by the wind of false doctrines, then those that are operating idolatry. Now you will ask the question, no, I don't go and serve any idol. How about your car? How about your house? How about your work? How about your children as idols? How about your wife as idol? How about your husband as idol? How about your homes as idol? How about your business as idol? That you took before God. They are more important than God. That is idol. There are modern idolatry. Your car might become, become an idol. Your wife might become an idol. Because of your wife, you decide not to go to church. Because of your husband, you decide not to go to church anymore. To serve God. You have now, you have now decided to serve the God of your husband. Either money, his wealth, his car, his lifestyle, his parents, his culture. Or of your wife, just like Ahab and Jezebel. Be careful. This is written to the church. Remember, I will read it, read it again. It said, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery. You see, adultery means, it is not actually talking of sleeping with other women. No, that's not what he's talking here. That is also one of it, but actually, in the realm of the spirit, adultery is you searching for other things but God. Taking other things as your God. He said he will put them, and being greedy and covetous. He said he will put them in the great tribulation. He will allow them to pass through the great tribulation. Unless they repent. He now said, and, the, and he will kill the children of Jezebel. Are you one of Jezebel? You better, you better get your life into Christ. Get born again. We have been talking, some have been saying, no, 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 there is no Jesus Christ. And this is that, that I am of this uh, tradition and this thing. And what is good for the tradition is tradition. Don't worry. I don't care. But let me assure you, a time is coming. He said, I will kill her children with death. And all the churches, so he's talking about the churches, not talking about the Old Testament. And all the churches shall know that I am. I am he who searches the reins and heart, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. My brothers and sisters, please, repent. People think that, yes, I'm a Christian and that's all. No. Let me tell you, if God has your soul, your soul belongs to him, but you, he might make you to go through the great tribulation. Repent, repent from apostasy, repent from idolatry, repent from adultery, repent from fornication, repent from evil act, and repent for koinoniaring, for fellowshipping with the world. We eat, we live. No, that's not the problem. But when they become your characteristics, thereby you switch from God. You are no more known of God. God will cast you out into the great tribulation. Oh, Father, Lord, we thank you. We worship, we adore you, we praise you, Lord. We know that, yes, we are not of those that are cast into the great tribulation. We are your children. We honor you, Lord. We have received your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.